What is a Christian? And are you a true Christian? And how do you know? Welcome back to the Down to Earth Christian. You know, one of the best ways to grow closer to God is by reading His Word in chronological order. And we have a free chronological reading schedule for you. It will help you see the story of the Bible in a whole new light. You'll see how the Psalms fit into the life of David and how the prophets fit into the books of Kings and Chronicles and how the letters of Paul fit into his missionary journeys as recorded in the book of Acts. The reading schedule is 100% free. There is a link down in the description below where you can download it or you can scan the QR code here on the screen and get it today. Now, let's jump into the topic of today's video. What is a Christian? You know, in today's world, there are a ton of different answers to that question. And here are just five of the answers that we sometimes hear. An American is a Christian. You know, some think that America and most European nations are Christian nations, and therefore the citizens of those nations are automatically Christian. Now, I mean, certainly there are many Christians in those nations, but that doesn't mean that the citizens of those nations are all Christians, just like not all Israelis are Jewish and not all Italians are Catholic. Others would say, well, a good person is a Christian. You know, some think that by the way you live, if you live with, with high moral principles, then you're a Christian. You know, if you are providing father and a loving mother or generous or kind and forgiving, if you love your neighbor as yourself, then you're perceived as being a Christian. But Jews and Buddhists and Hindus and Muslims who attempt to live with high moral standards or high moral principles, are they Christians? While Christians do definitely live with high moral principles, it is not their lifestyle that makes them a Christian. Others will go on to say, well, if you believe in God, then you're a Christian. But once again, other religions believe in God, like Judaism and Islam, but are they Christians? I don't even think that they would like to be called Christians. And while Christians definitely do believe in God, believing in God is not sufficient to become a Christian. Others may take it up a notch further and say, okay, well, people that go to church are Christians. Well, Christians definitely go to church. I mean, they assemble with the saints every first day of the week, but Unitarian Universalists, Jehovah Witnesses, Mormons, and members of other lesser-known cults all go to church. But are they Christians? Church attendance in and of itself does not make you a Christian. Then we come to probably the most common definition that is given, and that is someone who believes in Jesus is a Christian. Well, once again, Christians definitely do believe in Jesus the Christ, but is belief in Jesus enough to make you a Christian? I mean, Muslims believe in Jesus. They call him Isa. Demons believe in Jesus. Many atheists believe in the historical Jesus. Are they Christians? Oh man, I mean, when you think about this and you talk to people, then it is so confusing out there. Everybody is so confused about what a Christian is. And I think that's exactly the way Satan likes it. I mean, I hear all types of places and people being called Christian. I mean, that's a Christian school. That's a Christian tire shop. That's a good Christian man you know, so on and so forth, without much thought being given to what the biblical definition of a Christian is. And, you know, if we want to know what a Christian truly is, then we need to go to the Bible and see what the Bible has to say about it. Now, you might be surprised that the term Christian is only found in the Bible three times. The first time is in Acts chapter 11, verse 26 where the Bible says the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. Now, this took place several years after right, the death 
of Jesus, his, his crucifixion, his burial, his resurrection, his ascension back to heaven, and the church had grown dramatically during this time. Well, later on in the book of Acts, when Paul, the Apostle Paul, is recounting his conversion and proclaiming Christ to King Agrippa, King Agrippa said this to Paul, you almost persuade me to become a Christian. And then finally, Peter writes, yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. That's it. I mean, that is all there is, but it's totally sufficient. It is 100% sufficient for us to know without a doubt what a Christian is according to God. God says the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. And from that, we can learn that a Christian is a disciple, and that is a disciple of Christ. But what is a disciple then, and how do you become one? Well, once again, the Bible has the answer. Let's start first, though, by looking at the, the Greek word and the Greek definition of the word disciple and see if it sheds some light on it. The Greek word for disciple is methetes, and it means one who engages in learning through instruction from another. It's a pupil or an apprentice. Okay, so a disciple of Christ or a Christian is a pupil or an apprentice of Christ. But how do you become one? Well, let's look at what Jesus himself said in the Great Commission. Now, he said this after his crucifixion, after his burial, after his resurrection, after he established the new covenant. And he said this to his apostles whom he was leaving behind to continue his work. These are nearly his final words before he ascends back to heaven, leaving his apostles to continue his work. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Did you catch that? Jesus said that they were to make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and that they were to be teaching them all things that he had commanded them. Now, it's interesting here, the verb make disciples is in the imperative mood in the Greek, meaning that it is a command. It is something that they are specifically to do. They are to make disciples. And from that, we do learn a couple of things. One is, is that there is a point in time when somebody is not a disciple, and then they are made a disciple. So there is a process that takes place where a non-disciple becomes a disciple. That process is called making disciples. So when you look at that command from Christ, you see the command, but then you see two participles following it. And those two participles tell the apostles and us how to go about making those disciples. Those two participles are baptizing and teaching. And that tells us how you do that. How do you make a disciple, Jesus? Well, you baptize them and you teach them. That is how a disciple is made according to to our Lord himself. So there we have it, right? A Christian is a disciple, and a disciple is somebody who has been baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and has been taught to follow Christ's teaching. However, in the Gospels, we also find out that there are other qualifications for being a disciple of Christ. For example, John chapter 8, verse 32, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Luke chapter 14, verse 27, whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Luke chapter 14, verse 33, so therefore, any one of you who does not renounce all that he has cannot be my disciple. John chapter 13, verse 35, by this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. 
And finally, John chapter 15, verse 8. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. So then, after Christ's death and His resurrection, and after He has established the new covenant, people become Christians, that is, disciples, by being baptized into the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and being taught to observe everything that Christ has commanded us. And then we prove our discipleship by our lifestyle, that is, how we fulfill the commandments that Christ has given us. Now, I know this is going to open up a bunch of other questions, like what is baptism? What is the purpose of baptism? Um, do you have to be baptized to be saved? Um, who should be baptized? Should infants be baptized? Is there ever a reason to be re-baptized? And guys, we are going to cover all of those very important questions in future videos. So make sure that you subscribe to the channel and you don't miss out on those videos. And if you haven't downloaded the chronological reading schedule yet, be sure to get it now. There is a link down in the description below, or you can scan the QR code that is on the screen here and get it for free. Then after that, I will see you over at this video in just a second.